Hi everybody, it's Mrs. Bennett again. I'm here to talk about citing source B. In previous videos, we talked about why we use Works Cited Pages and how we use Noodle tools. In this video, I will show you how to cite your source B. And so I've logged into my Noodle tools account and I have my project title, Short School Week. Sometimes students think that for every new citation they create, they need to create a new project, and that's not the case. For every source for each project that you have, you keep them all underneath the same project. So short school week, open it up by clicking on the title. It brings you directly to the project dashboard. Um, and again, we only need to worry about the sources tab at the top. It will load and you'll see that it has the citation from Scholastic News in there. Now, I have from the library's website opened up a four day school week as my example article. And on the library's website, underneath each article, we have provided you with some of the bibliographic information because this is really your first real big opportunity to work on a works cited page. And so with that being said, um, Mrs. Payer and I decided that it might make sense to work together with you. So we've identified some of the content that you'll need for your citation, but other times like author name, you'll have to look for. And so I have this article open up. And if I toggle back to Noodle Tools, I wanna to select that green new source button. The first thing that Noodle Tools is going to ask me again is, where is this source? Some of you may have printed out your article and that's completely fine, but what Noodle Tools is asking is where was it originally? And you'll notice that underneath each citation, Mrs. Payer and I have identified, is it a website? Or as is the case in the last article, is it a database? And so you can answer that question based on the type of source that you have. If you have a database article, you want to select magazine as the what is it. If you have a website, you would select web page. So again, if you have a database, you're selecting that it's a magazine. If you have a website, you're selecting that it's a web page. And because I'm using a four day school week, which is the second article down, it's identified as a website for me. So the first thing, oh, URL. URL is the information in the address bar at the top. Mrs. Payer and I did take some of the articles from websites and save them in Drive. And so what we did for you is we provided you the original URL. So if the URL is listed on the library's website, highlight it, copy it, and paste it in. Date of publication. Hmm, did Mrs. Payer and I provide that? Look, we did. So June 28th, 2018. So June 28th, 2018. Most recent date of access. A lot of kids get confused on this, but really it's, um, don't overthink it. it it's the date that you most recently accessed the website. And so that would actually be, for me, it's today. That's the day that I'm on here most recently. So you can actually click on that today link and it will autofill for you. And then if we scroll down this next area, it talks about information directly related to the web page itself. So the first area is contributors. And so author, editor, translator. Most of the time, web pages, as well as database articles, will note who the author is either at the very top near the title of the article or all the way after the last paragraph of the article itself. So if I toggle to my source, you'll see that it says by Denise Marie Ordway, and it's right around that title at the top. So I go back to Noodle Tools and Denise Marie 
and board way was her last name and you want to make sure that you select her role and it says by you would know if it was an editor or a translator because it would say edited by or translated by if it's an author it just says author or by sometimes but sometimes it will say written by or it might say author colon but so we'll identify that she's the author and then web page or document article title mrs pear and i did kind of provide that for you, but it's kind of hidden. So if we look at the web, or the web page, um, the article title is a four day school week. Sometimes kids think it's usable knowledge, but usable knowledge is actually the, um, the publication that um, the Harvard Graduate School put out. Um, so a four day school week, and we wanna make sure that we follow punctuation that the article has provided. So it hyphenated four day. So we would make sure that we hyphenated that school week. And it has a question mark at the end. So you wanna make sure that you've provided that question mark as well. But like I have said before, that sometimes journalists don't follow MLA rules. Sometimes they follow other rules. So you would need to make sure that you followed appropriate capitalization. For instance, if I didn't capitalize school week, Noodle Tools is identifying for you. Oh, we caution yellow box. Um, you didn't identify something appropriate, and it will even give you the suggestion as to what needs to get changed. And then, if we scroll down, the next two boxes are name of website and the publisher of the site. And Mrs. Payer and I noticed when we put this article into Drive that it didn't export the title of the whole website. And the difference between a website versus a web page is a website collects lots of web pages, just like a binder holds onto lots of different pages in your folders and your notebooks. Um, a website holds onto lots of web pages. And so we provided you the website name or the database name for everything. So this is Harvard Graduate School of Education. So you can copy it and paste it. And then we're looking for publisher of the site. Sometimes this is provided and sometimes it isn't on websites. For this one, it is. So president and fellows of Harvard College. So again, highlight, copy, paste. All right. And again, you want to go through and make sure that you have nothing highlighted in yellow with those caution signs that you've made a mistake somewhere in terms of capitalization or punctuation. And as long as everything checks out, you've populated all of your boxes, go ahead and hit that blue save button. And Noodle Tools will work its magic and bring it all together and format it according to MLA rules. So it's added italics, it's formatted our dates, it's formatted the way that the author's name should look, and it's given us quotation marks around the article title. So, um, <clears throat> Excuse me. So that's really it for citing source B. And so at this point, you should be going, finishing up your notes for source B and then moving on to source C.